That's right, boy. That's right, go ahead. Go ahead, show you a real man. Show, go ahead, show you a man. Defense again, Chet? Well, he drew on me. I mean, you can ask the witnesses. They all saw it. He's lying, Sheriff. He made Josh do it. Josh didn't want to fight. I was just protecting my interests, that's all. You've got no interest in me. Not any longer. Look, you can go when I tell you you can go. You've got my mark on you just like everything else that belongs to me. She told you that was over. Now, you just leave her alone. Why don't you go back to school, boy? You're out of your class. I mean, way out. Walking around with a dance all queen. <laughs> Go ahead, Chet. Go ahead and draw. Sure. I shoot an unarmed man and you and that fancy shot kid, you gun me down for murder legal, huh? Is that the best you can do, Ringo? My hopes are high. You'll give me something better. Oh. When I kill a man, I, I do it in self-defense. And you, boy, you stay out of my way, you And stay away from Lily. Look, Chet, I'm warning you. Quit pushing people around, or I'll put you away for a while. You better see a doctor about that. Lily? <sighs> Is there anything I can do, Johnny? Maybe if you'd ask Laura to talk to her, it might help, Case. All right. What about Stovepipe Charlie? Who? I think he's talking about me. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, for what? Uh, do you intend to steal my hat? Oh, no, I, I just didn't want to get dirty. Thank you. Thought you might need it for your act. My act? Well, yeah, sure, the way you're dressed and all. Ruffs, curtains, middle piece, donkey chain. I figured you for a hawker and a squawker. Or maybe even a bumpologist. But when you made that country router dash and stepped in front of Tomstead as 45... You must forgive me, please. I speak uh, oh, five, six languages, but that is one I, uh, I never heard. Well, now, that's funny, because that's just plain English. What's that? Uh, my deputy used to travel with a carnival. I'm John Ringo, Sheriff of Villardi, and this is Kali. Andrei Andreevich Baranov, Your Honor, late of Russia. A pleasure. And you can drop the Your Honor. Johnny will do. Oh, thank you, Johnny. <laughs> And how would you call me, Andre, in English? Andrew, I suppose, maybe Andy. Andy, yeah, that's good. I like that, Andy. It'll make me a real American. I'm Andy, and I'm glad to make your acquaintance, Deputy Cully. About your outfit, Andy, as long as you're going to be in town... Oh, excuse me a minute, gentlemen, please. A uh, little business. Josh is smiling, and he must have told him where to find gold. Johnny, Deputy Sheriff Cully, my friend, forgive me. Uh, you were saying something about my attire. Uh, there's something wrong? Well, uh, not exactly, Andy. It, uh, it is a little unusual, though. It's, it's different from the way we dress. Well, we're all different from each other. That is the beauty of mankind. 
What a man is up here and here cannot be changed by what he wears. Andy, I realize it's none of my business, but would you mind telling us what you told Josh? Oh, that. Well, it was nothing. A few words from a poet. Ruined love, when built anew, grows fairer than at first. More strong, far greater. What? Do you know the sonnets of Sir Francis Bacon? Tavarish! <laughs> <laughs> to think that in this wild and beautiful and sometimes savage land, I could find someone who, to share with me the, the treasures of the soul. Why, but that is like, like finding a lost friend. <laughs> Uh, Andy, that bulge you're carrying under your coat by your shoulder seems out of character for you. It is my life. I depend on it. I carry it always. Yes, but you're letting yourself wide open to attack. Oh, every man, my friend, is open to attack, depending on his intent. Now, my is to live with dignity. <laughs> The principle for which I stand, the dignity of mankind, is attacked. I would gladly die to defend it. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Talks funny. Kind of sad. Johnny, come in. Come in, Johnny. I did not think I would see you again so soon. <laughs> Sit down, my friend. I'll get a towel, dry my hands. Do you like music, Johnny? I'll play for you. Andy, who are you? I? But you, you already know. I'm Andrei Baranov. I come from Russia. Yes, St. Petersburg, to be exact. But how did you know that? Oh, you saw the register. Andy, this is the West. Sure, a lot of people travel through here all the time, but a man from Russia traveling halfway around the world is pretty unusual. And when three men from the same place in Russia arrive the same day, then I'm curious. You're talking about the two men who arrived after you did. Do you know them? Yes. <laughs> We've been fellow voyagers halfway across the world. From St. Petersburg to Constantinople. Across the Mediterranean to Lisbon, then America. I managed to reach New York ahead of them. I was sure I lost them in Missouri. And I did. Until today. Who are they? Assassins. They've come to kill me. <laughs> What's so funny? You, you look as if you've never heard about that before. <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Nothing. Little indigestion. <laughs> My friend, forgive me, please, but I just can't help thinking. What a good joke it would be on Alexei Nikolai if they didn't have to kill me after all. <laughs> Welcome. We'll go get something to eat. I'll put on my coat. Oh, Johnny. My stomach it is absolutely empty. I hope there is a good, nice place to eat in Valardi. Monsieur, après vous. <laughs> Oh, poor Alexei Nikolai. What if they could not kill me? <laughs> Eat good, John. With zest. That is a good thing. It shows that you have an appetite for living, yeah. Me. I have no stomach for food since the doctors told me I must eat this, you know, vegetables, milk. Did you ever taste vodka, John? No? 
<laughs> well, it makes all other drinks taste like medicine. It is white, Jack. Well, maybe, maybe a little blue. You know, like a good diamond, and it goes down smooth, hot, <laughs> like so. <clears throat> no, no, you have to be a calf to enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my friend, please, do not worry. You will do nothing. No, no, not here with all these witnesses. You know, my countrymen have more fitness than that. This is liable to be one of the politest murders in history. <laughs> I thought I could help you, but I guess you don't want any help. If you should change your mind, I'll be back in my office. Johnny. Johnny. Please, do not be angry with me, my friend, please. I'm in no immediate danger. Look, death, when it comes, it'll come swiftly and silently. But it comes to us all, doesn't it? Sooner or later. Stay, my friends, huh? Good. Come, come, we'll have drink together. Whiskey, gents? No, no, not for me, my friend, no. I will inhale his drink a little. I've heard of cheap drunks, Johnny, but ain't he overdoing it a little? <laughs> Thank you. Ah, oh, good. Salud. You don't drink. I've got a long day ahead. Oh. Tell me, Johnny, do you like this town? It's like any other town, Andy. Good and bad. An echo of the human race, with its bullies like Chet Tomstetter and its martyrs like Josh Malloy. And maybe you. <laughs> this Chet Tomstetter, he's used this gun before, hasn't he? To kill. Twice. But I do not understand. Why do you allow this, this murderer, this Chet Tomstetter, to go free? Because when he kills, he kills in self-defense, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's legal. It's a sort of unwritten law. If a man draws first and gets killed, he wasn't murdered. It was because he was killed oh, in self-defense. Josh, this young man on the stage this morning, will he one day be killed in this, this self-defense? I hope not, Andy. Well, are you sure you're going to be all right? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Then I'd better be on my way. I still have a town to look after. Introduced, but I saw you on the streets this morning. May I? You were looking at that young man, this Josh. Your face, oh, it was so beautiful. Not that you're not beautiful now, but, but this morning your face was so soft with that look of a young woman in love. But you ran from him. Why? You're afraid of this shit, Tamstetter? I hate him. Did you tell this to your young men? I don't want him killed. But I couldn't tell him. But why not? Two young people in love, they can tell each other anything. Why not give the boy a chance to judge for himself? A man must fight for what he loves. The rules are, mister, I drink or dance. Which will it be? Do you know we're not, uh, just talk? I work here. What'll it be? To dance with a pretty girl once more. Come with us. <laughs> Harry, a waltz. No, no, no. Something gay, bright, something faster. Andy 
He's had a heart attack. A what? It happened while he was dancing with Lily. Did you get Doc Bardell? Yeah, he said that Andy wouldn't be needing any more medical attention. I thought he meant Andy was dead, but he's not. You know what he's doing right now? He's over at the hotel playing his fiddle. Should you be doing that? Absolutely not. You're a renegade, a real rebel. Of course. That's why we're simpatico. You too are a rebel. You fight brutality one way, I fight tyranny another. Is that what you're running away from, Andy? Tyranny? I killed someone, Jenny. Killed him when he came to arrest a friend of mine. An harmless old man. Someone had informed on Peter. It doesn't matter for what you understand, it could have been anything. Maybe he found a joke about the Tsar Alexander II amusing, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> My friend protested when they came to arrest him. I was there. They struck him down, beat him, and suddenly I could feel my hands closing around the throat of a man. He was the head of the state police. I killed him. Yes, I enjoyed killing him. My wife, Maria. Never saw her again. With me gone, I knew that they wouldn't harm her, so I ran. The first heart attack came in Constantinople, Johnny. There were others. The doctor said five months, maybe six. Now, glass is almost empty now. You say the word, and I'll run those assassins out of the country. On what charge? I'll find one. But so tyrants are born, no, Johnny. Do not bend the rules to suit yourself, even for a friend. Well, I know one man in town who would gladly bend the rules, as far as you're concerned. Andy, do me a favor and stay out of the saloon tonight. Do you think this Chet Tomstetter remembers me from this morning? Knowing him, I'd bank on it. I don't want you to give him an excuse. Me? But I'm a peaceful man, Sheriff. The only thing I'm looking forward to is a steak. Oh. I stack this wine with plenty of juice. Will you join me, Tavarish? Thank you, no, but, but what's the occasion for the feast? Oh, I'm breaking a fast, yes. A six months long fast, Johnny. Tonight, I leave. Snifter. What in a witch? Brandy in a glass. <laughs> Why'd you say so? Here you are, mister. Thank you, my friend. Hey, Lily. I haven't seen you around all night. are a swine. You try to be funny. I never trade quips with buffoons. You're a stupid and mitigated, ugly fool. I would spit on you if the woman were not present. Instead, I... Jesse, that's nobody's doing! Please, Miss Lily, I know. 
I, Andrei Andreevich Baranov, I accept your challenge. You're going to get 20 years. And if he dies... Kelly, lock him up. Not me! <laughs> Lily, live. Get your young men and live. <laughs> Get it. Chet Tomstetter did their job for them. You know, it's a shame. What is? Well, Andy dying for nothing. He didn't think so.
show you a real man. Show go ahead, show you a man. Defense again, Chet? Well, he drew on me. I mean, you asked the witnesses. They all saw it. He's lying, Sheriff. He made Josh do it. Josh didn't want to fight. I was just protecting my interests, that's all. You've got no interest in me. Not any longer. Look, you can go when I tell you you can go. You've got my mark on you just like everything else that belongs to me. She told you that was over. Now, you just leave her alone. Why don't you go back to school, boy? You're out of your class. I mean, way out. Walking around with a dance-off queen at... Go ahead, Chet. Go ahead and draw. Sure. I should have done all that.